Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to live Q&A Wednesdays with me. I am Darcy. I'm the creator of the Vibrant Woman program. I am a certified founding member of MAF Method Health Coaches and Practitioners. That's really important for our topic today because we're going to talk all about MAF Method. It stands for Maximum Aerobic Function. Pioneered, created by my friend and mentor, Dr. Phil Maffetone, has um, really paradigm shifting implications, really important implications for healthcare, um, taking personal responsibility for our health, um, achieving you know, the best health and fitness. And I'm in a group of mathers over in the math method group. There are a lot of women who complain, a complain is not the right word. A lot of women who report that the math method as it's taught by Phil and by all of his followers, by all of us folks who have been, um, you know, teaching about the aerobic system, about stress and inflammation, about carbohydrate tolerance, all of those of us who have been teaching about this for a long time, um, we tend to, many of us, focus on the fitness aspects. And I think that's important for a lot of people who are into, sorry, I'm totally distracted by what's happening outside my window right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just shut the blinds. There's drama over there. Um, anyway, so there are a lot of women that math method as it is written and talked about and practiced by the biggest voices, I think, in health and fitness right now, particularly athletic performance fitness, are men. And there are a lot of things that are fundamentally, foundationally, um, scientifically, theoretically supported um, in the theory, in the science, in the literature that don't necessarily work for a woman's body. And so I want to unravel a whole bunch of that stuff today, both the practical aspects of like, if you're a woman who has tried this, hey, Deborah, I'm glad you're here. I hope more folks will come on as, as we go. I know there were a lot of people interested in this topic. I'm going to do my very best to stick to, not a script, but I, I have um, some really important points I want to cover, and I don't want to ramble too much. This is um, a topic that is super important to me. It's dear to my heart because I, so let me just start at the beginning. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself, how I met Phil, and why I am doing this work. So we'll just start right there. Okay. Um, hi, Jeff. So here's the deal. If you are a woman, and let me just say this, today's Q&A topic was designed specifically to address the things that I see women reporting over in that math group, a bunch of really smart, really fit, really fast and strong women over there trying to implement this paradigm shifting um, method of, of training that, that goes against the, the current paradigm the mainstream model of no pain, no gain, right? So we're unraveling all of that and they can see the importance for that. They can see the science around um, getting faster. Why slowing down to train ultimately makes you faster. There's tons here. <laughs> Do my best to cover it in, in, um, you know, in our 30 minute Q and A session. But the main idea is a lot of women get into this method for what they've read about only to discover that their results are not what they read about. They're either outliers or they're not applying it correctly or there's something else going on with a woman's body that has not been talked about and addressed in that mainstream, in the mainstream, right? Here's why. Whose voices are predominantly out there in the mainstream? And as much as I love Phil Maffetone and his work, his teachings changed my life, saved my life. And I'll talk about that here in a second. Um, he's never lived in a body with ovaries. <laughs> okay. And just because you've studied about bodies with ovaries and even practiced on them with, you know, treating women, which Phil has done in his clinic and he's brilliant. And um, like I said, what he taught me changed my life, saved my health put me on a path to thriving that keeps going way past just feeling better. And I live in a place called thriving now. Okay. So Phil's responsible for all that, but, and as brilliant as he is, 
And so many of the guys that we see out there talking about things like interim fasting and high intensity training and race days and marathon times and weight resistance, um, strength training, so much of all of that work and the research that supports that work is based on what we see in men's bodies. There's not very much attention paid to the differences and the nuances that come into play in a female body. And that means, you know, our hormone balance. All right. So there, it's more complicated. And there's something that I want all women who are trying this to understand that if it's not working for you, um, then there's something we need to just look, I think we need to peel back some of the layers and look more specifically at what's going on. All right, now I'm starting to ramble. I'm Darcy, I'm the creator of the Vibrant Woman program. I'm here today to share my story. I met Phil Maffetone when I was a young single mom trying to rehabilitate my daughter's brain injury. She was 12 days old when she got um, spinal meningitis, nearly died that night in the hospital. We left a few weeks later with a big bottle of fetobarbital because she was at risk for seizures and a whole other long list of labels. And I was told to just take her home and raise her like a normal child. And I'm sorry, but this light is just driving me crazy. So we need light, but not right on my glasses. I'm wearing my blue blockers today. This is one of the ways I fight stress. We'll talk more about that before I sign off. So the idea here is that um, I was not, that was the beginning of my downward stress spiral. And I will, I'll share a little bit of that here in a few minutes. But that was that, that long list of disability labels and the unknown possibility of a ticking time bomb inside my daughter, you know, was not just was not OK with me. So I spent the first few years kind of in denial about it, watching her struggle and um, keeping track of her development. Eventually, it was pretty clear she was falling farther and farther behind her peers. That's what I'm in the progress of writing a memoir about, because there is hope. If you know a child with um, a similar story, neurological problems, all these labels like epilepsy, ADHD, autism spectrum disorder, um, global developmental delays, all of this stuff, um, there's hope. The mainstream doesn't have it all dialed in there either. They're really good at talking about symptoms and labeling symptoms. They're not so good about helping us find the root cause and address the root cause of those things. And so. The outcomes are far better on the other side of removing the root of a problem. That's what that's what all of this is about. So I met Phil on that journey and, you know, his work really resonated with me because that's exactly what he was talking about. He was talking about root causes, root causes of how to organize the brain, root causes of how to get enough oxygen and nutrients to that brain and to make sure that it can function efficiently and heal and repair itself. The connection between the brain and the body, um, how our muscle tone, our coordination, our balance, our even our weight, our hormones, all of that depends on a healthy brain and the biofeedback mechanisms between the body and the brain, how the central nervous system runs everything. So I learned all this from Phil, helped to heal my daughter's brain injury. And again, that's a story for a memoir for another day. I write about it on my blog. Feel free to reach out if you want me to talk more about that or if you want to learn more. So there's all of that that's there. So I met Phil um, doing that rehabilitation program. Haley's progress was amazing. She went from a learning disabled child um, with lots of seizures and lots of other related health problems, you know, health problems from the medications and all kinds of stuff from her inability to sleep through the night to a successful, um, confident, independent college student today. So she just finished her finals yesterday. She has about another semester to go at a major Big Ten university, and she's doing great. So there's that. On that journey, being a single mom, working to fight for my daughter's life in a system, in a complex network of systems that doesn't support mothers or neurodiverse people um, without access to, to, to money and, and good health care, I burned the heck out, I burned out, completely blew my adrenals. Um, so this is where Phil's work, I say it saved my life. Because without understanding the complex relationship between the adrenal glands and stress and my brain, my hormone balance, um, the cascade of things, like 
you know, when you knock down a domino and the rest of them fall, what the mainstream wants to do is look at the last domino that fell and say, oh, you have a thyroid problem. We'll give you a pill for that. Here's a pill to pick up your thyroid problem. Okay, but think about it for a minute. Think about when you, does that work with the dominoes? When you knock down a whole line of dominoes, which is the domino you need to pick up first? Can you, can you fight to get this one up? Does that work? And even if you can stand this one up and it looks normal from the front for a minute, did you fix the root of the problem? You didn't. This is exactly what happens with our health. We are not living in a paradigm that looks for root causes. So we, you know, you, science can only give you the answers to the questions you're asking. We're not even asking the questions that take us to the root cause. No wonder we're not finding them. Okay, well, enter Phil into my life again. I had already known him um, through the work with Haley, my, through my work with Haley, and had already been implementing so much of what he taught into both of our lives that when my adrenals blew, and I felt it that night, I was in the bleachers at a swim meet, the coach was yelling at her. Um, she had made another mistake because of her hearing sensitivity. Again, this is this is a story for another day, but let's just say it was the last domino. It was the last straw. I couldn't take it anymore. I literally felt, um, I had felt like I had been on the verge of tears for about a year, right? Or many years that I just wasn't letting them flow. And that night at that swim meet, seeing her, you know, struggle and, and fail again, all the parents turning to look at me like, what, what is wrong with you and your kid and all of the pressure of all of that inside my body, I felt pop. Now it wasn't until later that I look back and understand that was my adrenal glands. And I've actually had several doctors tell me like, mm, no lady, you're, you're right. You're crazy lady. How many of us have heard some expert standing outside of us Tell us, mm, no, what you're thinking and what you're feeling can't possibly be. How many of us have been gaslit by a damn overweight, unhealthy doctor who never has had ovaries telling us about our body? Hands up. And hands up if you are fed up with that and you're going to take back your own power you're going to rely on your own wisdom because I'm here to say that you can. You can trust yourself. You can trust your body. It is working toward thriving every second of every minute of every day of your entire life. And if you have something less than thriving happening, it's because we aren't listening to what the body's asking for and we're not responding appropriately. That is all I really have to say or teach. That is it right there in a nutshell. The courage to even say something like that out loud as directly and boldly as I just did came from my own lived experience that I learned through working with Dr. Phil Maffetone. All right. So Phil taught me about the connection between my adrenal function, which is the physiological organ. That's what popped that night. The physiological organ in our body that handles stress and um, everything else, everything. The adrenals are on the front line of our immunity. They are implicated in the woman's delicate, um, uh, sophisticated symphony of hormone balance. They are part of um, our blood sugar stability. So they have everything to do with um, the way our brains function um, based on what we're eating. The adrenal glands are, they're implicated in our sleep cycles, our diurnal rhythms. They are implicated in things like uh, not just that blood sugar stability, but then how that impacts the brain. So our learning, memory, moods, all of it. So if you're, if you're not taking care of your body in a way that allows you to adapt appropriately to stress, and if you're not living a lifestyle that lowers stress as low as possible, then we're going to have these problems and look around in modern society. We do. All right. So this thing about, um, my stress meltdown, <laughs> burnout, complete burnout. When, after that pop, I noticed with immediately, like within a day or two, I started having more bloating. Um, I started putting weight around my middle a lot, like a lot, lot, a lot. Um, I noticed it in my face. 
I noticed my energy levels tank like immediately, like could not wake up in the morning, couldn't get energized, couldn't get out of bed, couldn't get functioning. Um, the hormone balance went downhill from there. Sorry, that glare is driving me crazy. So food cravings, memory problems, lethargy. Um, didn't take long for the food allergies to start because once your adrenals go down, my thyroid went down. Okay, if your thyroid is not optimal, your metabolism isn't good, your body temperature isn't correct, you can't digest your food. If you're not digesting your food, pieces of food, particularly if you are eating a grain-based diet, um, you're tons more likely to have what we call leaky gut, which is that food can escape um, through, the, through the permeable gut and you end up with uh, undigested proteins circulating through your body in places they shouldn't be. So the immune system counts them as invaders. You get all this immune stuff. So we end up with food allergies and food intolerance. And um, I mean, it goes on from there, right? Because if you're not digesting your food, certainly you're not getting the nutrients out of it. So then you're going to have problems with your health and like every other way. And what tends to happen for most of us is that we're going to see our worst symptoms in the places where our genetic weak links are, okay? So that's my story. And to be really honest, I never thought much about the importance of it until today when I was reading the comments from the other women in the math group and how excited they are to be able to talk about these things, about health hormone health, thyroid, how it all ties together with what we eat or don't eat, how it's related to our fitness and our athletic performance. I never thought I would be in a position of sitting here as any kind of an expert to share and help uplift and connect other women around these topics. And if it weren't for that terrible burnout that I'd had, I would never have been able to take that journey, learn what I learned, heal myself, and now provide resources for other women to do the same. So I'm just showing up for you today as a wounded healer, as a sacred responsibility that I have to myself and my own heart, my own integrity, and that I have to you. Because when I was out there fighting that battle back from the brinks of burnout, I was told by every professional that I met that I should end up on medications for the rest of my life, that I'd never be able to do this, never be able to do that, never be able... And... Um, I've proven every single one of them wrong. So here I am. I'm, I'm ageless. I don't share my age because I'm ageless. Um, but my chronologically aged peers are experiencing menopause symptoms. Um, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's a journey I look forward to. It's just that I'm still cycling regularly and comfortably. My post from yesterday was all about how I have zero pain with my cycle anymore. I'm not... I have no physical pain. I have no mental or emotional pain. I don't have the rage anymore that used to come with, um, you know, the few days before my period starts. So all of this just to say, like, it can be that bad. And that's a snapshot of a moment in time. That's the picture of a body not getting what it needs. That is a testimony to the power of stress to take us down when we don't have the tools to manage it. And let me be here as a testimony today to say what is possible when we have the tools. It's not just having them that counts, it's using them. The tools to step by step by step heal that relationship with our bodies and come out on the other side. And again, it's, it's an eternal path. The path goes from burnout to health and it keeps going. It goes to thriving if you stay on the path. Now, what is that path I'm talking about? For me, that path was what we call the math method. We're calling it that because Phil is the one who is writing and speaking. He's not the only one writing and speaking about these tools. Um, he just happens to have, have put it together and packaged it in such a way that it is pretty easily digestible and he's made it simple to follow. Now, the problem is it's a personalizable um, toolkit. It, it's not, um, it's universally applicable. So for the people that say math method didn't work for me, I'm going to pause you for just a minute. 
what that means, what that really means, if you can hear this, it will serve you so well. The method works if you have a human body because at its core, the method is about how to lower stress and inflammation in a human body. So if the method didn't work for you, then we need to talk about a couple things. We have to talk about what were your goals in using it and did you get the pieces personalized for you appropriately? All right, so let's do that right now. Let's talk about that. Um, for the women that say math method didn't work for me, I wanna ask you to, to think about and be really honest with yourself about what were your goals and what were your intentions for starting to use math method? And to be really specific, if you already know this or if you're new here or if you haven't heard me talk about math method this way before, um, then I want to lay out what those pieces are. Math method is, um, first of all, it's nutrition, how to eat the foods that work best for your body. That's very vague. We start with carbohydrate tolerance because we know that eating above your personal carbohydrate tolerance causes all kinds of chaos in the body. It is probably the biggest stressor that modern humans have, aside from the lighting um, and the bad shoes and anyway, but it's, it's sugar and the foods that turn to sugar. So Phil's method is number one, find your carb tolerance and get all the other nutrients that your human body needs. We've got to feed them. Okay, that's the only thing that they have to build, function, and repair with is the food you put in. So it's got to be all the right things and none of the bad ones. Okay, so that's piece one. Piece two is movement. Um, I call it movement. Some people call it exercise. You know, I haven't talked to Phil this year. I, I'm not sure what words he's using right now. He talks to a lot of high-level athletes, and so he speaks your language. He talks about training. Um... I call it simply movement. We have to be moving our bodies every day at the proper intensity. And that is so important because we are awash in messages that are toxic from a culture that profits on this no pain, no gain paradigm. It's, it's The paradigm is expired. We need to retire that thinking. Um, it's alive and well in many pockets still of the world and some of them in our own homes and our own families, and I, this is one piece that I see in the women that talk about math method not working for them. What I, If I dig a little deeper, and I, that's my intention here, is to dig a little deeper and see what we can unravel. Usually there is a piece of toxic, no pain, no gain mentality lurking in there somewhere. And once we find that little seed of it and we um, pull that up by the roots, examine it, <laughs> look at, what really is at play there? What thoughts are we thinking? Why are we thinking them? Usually it's some form of no pain, no gain, and it's some form of addiction to competition. So a lot of us are training and moving our bodies in ways that are ignoring the messages of the body because we're attending to the messages from a toxic culture. Can you hear that? So nutrition is the first piece of math. Movement at the proper intensity is the second piece of math. And the third piece, which, which is its own piece, is stress. Sleep goes with that. Rest and recovery. We've got to feed the body. We've got to move the body. We have to restore and recover, rest the body. Those are the three main pieces. Now, Turns out that the first two pieces, this is far more than one plus one equals two. This is exponential. So addressing the first two pieces goes most of the way toward eliminating the stress that our bodies are under. Not all the way, because we've got all kinds of other hidden stressors. Um, I'll talk about a few of them in a minute. But those are the three main pieces. All right, so really when women say math method didn't work for me, we either have to say, okay, well, which of those pieces are you maybe not, not applying? So a lot of women want to apply, sorry, I'm going to have the wrong fingers here, but they don't want to apply the nutrition piece and they don't want to apply the restore and rest piece. They just want to apply what they know about the movement piece. So they want to use part of the math method, 
And you can imagine that if you're just doing a part of it, you're not going to end up with the whole benefit as if you used the whole thing, right? You can hear that, right? Okay. So that's the biggest thing that I notice. And then the other thing that I notice is that the movement piece is aimed at intensity, getting the proper intensity, which for most of us, or all of us, <laughs> for all of us, is lower intensity. Because again, the no pain, no gain model has us trained to work out um, at too high of an intensity, too many days a week, too many miles. I'm not here to say that you cannot be very physically fit and active. You absolutely can, but you have to do it in a way that honors the needs of your body, that gets the body back. Basically, this entire method does this. Maximum aerobic function, aptly titled, because he knew exactly what he was up to, is all about restoring the aerobic system of the body, in the aerobic cells are the cells that um, thrive in the presence of oxygen. They burn oxygen. We're, we're not going to get onto all the complicated cellular metabolism stuff today, but let's just think about it this way. And a lot of us are confused because we that conjures ideas of like Jane Fonda videos and um, all the cardio stuff. And a lot of that work that we see today is actually anaerobic because it's at too high of an intensity. So Phil has... Um, that's his story to tell. If you want to know more about how he developed his heart rate formulas and why he writes about it in his books and um, over in his articles on his website, I'm happy to share that link with anybody who wants to dig deeper. I'm also happy to go um, face to face, toe to toe with anybody who wants to, to talk more about those fine tuned points and how, you know, how you should be applying them or your personal experience with them. Um, so I'm happy to do all of that in person with people too point of today's talk is to cover a few of these broad strokes because what we see then with women who say, and it's a lot of women, and they're not wrong, there's a piece here that we have not been able to look at and that, that piece is the stress piece for women. So women are under more stress than our male counterparts most of the time, more physiological stress. And it's normalized because the world runs and has for a very long time on women's free emotional labor. We are responsible for things seen and unseen. We hold the weight of the well-being of all the beloveds in our world. And it's a lot. So the emotional stress that most women in the modern world experience is sort of, um, it's a given, it's taken for granted, and it's something that a lot of women aren't even aware of themselves. So when we begin to look at the math method and the women, especially the elite, athletic, successful, fast, strong, um, training women who are trying to use math method, my question for you is, why are you using it? What is your goal? For a lot of us, we came to the math method to get faster, to slim down. Those are the top two that I hear. If you have another goal, tell me. Put it in the comments and tell me. Whether this is replay, just if you're watching the replay, put replay and put your goals there. I'm going to come back and check on this because I have a feeling this needs to be an ongoing conversation. This is not like, you know, I have like, I do have tips for you. Of course I do. But this is not like, oh, this can be solved in like, you just missed this one little tip and you need to do this and everything's okay again. All of this, these are so many moving parts here. And for women, the invisible moving part that we keep sweeping under the rug that we do not address and we have to, now we're going to address it, is stress. Here's why. If you're using the math method to get faster or to slim down, both of those things depend on your ability to fire up that aerobic system. Two reasons. You need to train the aerobic system to burn fat, more fat, more consistently instead of sugar. Okay, that's one piece of it. You also need, thank you for that like, 
Um, sorry, I just lost, I just totally lost uh, my train of thought. You need to train your aerobic system to burn more fat more consistently. That is the slim down. That is also the speed issue. Here's the other part of it. This has, and we don't hear it much over in that group. Uh, we, we don't hear it much from Phil. I think if you were to read everything back historically, you would see he goes through phases where he definitely addresses this head on. It's neurological. This impacts the brain. This is something that, that's the reason I found Phil, remember? To heal my daughter's brain. So this is something that I am always amazed at never surprised about and it's not talked about enough when we talk about training and athletes the brain runs everything people if you want to be faster you better have some snappy ass proprioception you better have a beautiful gait you better have really good um, hemispheric dominance you better have um, smooth clean cross pattern movement all of this is controlled by the brain the brain needs to burn glucose. If your body cells are hogging it up because they're burning glucose, you can't get there from there. So this neurological piece needs to be a bigger part of the conversation. That's number one. The other thing for women is the hormone piece. We have so many women struggling um, to get a full night's sleep. Think about that for a minute. If you are not able to sleep through the night, you're not getting six to eight deep sleep cycles, the restorative kind of sleep that clean the plaque out of your brain, that reboot your immune system, that, you know, so many things happen during sleep. And if we're not able to get that sleep and then we're trying to run and train and walk our dogs and take care of our kids and our parents and the lawns to the you know to the neighbors standards and all of and work and make enough money and clean the house and you know keep our hair whatever it's there's no way so what we have to address for women is the stress load all right because if we're not addressing stress or if we're not addressing the first two pieces of math both of them, the diet, the nutrition, the carb tolerance, and the movement intensity, if we're not doing both, then we're not taking care of the stress, then yeah, we're not gonna get the results. It's not just about slow down that heart rate so you can run faster. It is, that's a part of it, but let's think about why. Let's think about why training slower would allow people in the long run to get faster. So we're lowering stress when we do this. We're burning more fat instead of sugar. We're in, so we're leaning down the body. We're improving the brain function. We're improving proprioception, which is balance, coordination, um, reflexes, running gait, muscle tone. You know, your muscle tone is controlled by your brain. Yeah. I learned that as a parent of a brain injured child with a bunch of spasticity. Like, our muscle tone is controlled by our brain. The brain sends the signals to the muscles to tell them when to, you know, fire, contract, and when to um, relax. And it's an absolute, beautiful, sophisticated, electrical dance in the body. And if the brain is lethargic because your blood sugar stability is not good, or because your hormone balance is, you know, gunking it up a little bit, then you are not going to have all of that. Now, I know some of you can hear me. I know some people are still thinking, all right, when is she going to get to like the things I need to do to make math method work for me? Um, and I know some of you are still thinking like, well, yeah, brain, okay. But you know, I don't have, I don't have coordination problems. So here's what I want you to actually think about. Well, I want to invite you to, to reflect on and this is something we do in my fibro moon course. And, and I am going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about um, ways to work with me and the solutions that I offer uh, long term so that you can, um, you know, consider if, if that's the kind of support you might like to have. I'm absolutely determined to build a community around this and to help other women realize that honestly, all the answers 
are within you. So that thyroid problem that I was having because of the adrenal problem that I had, because of the stress load that I wasn't able to get out from under, every single step along that, that burnout pathway, a journey down into burnout, every single step along that pathway, my body was giving me messages and clues. You know, the lethargy, the depression, the lack of energy was simply a call to rest. But what do we do when we hear that call? And I just did a Q&A on this last week. I talked about women and cycles and seasons and cycles. What do we do when we get that call to rest? We freaking take something. We, we jolt ourselves alive again with coffee or caffeine or sugar and we ignore it and we go, go, go anyway. We have lost touch, folks, with our bodies, what they want, what they need, how they're communicating to us, the way that they ask us, and we override them. And then we say, because we think there's something wrong with us. What's wrong with me? Well, nothing. You need to rest now. <laughs> you need to rest for a while. And um, I just want to invite us as women, especially, ask you to sit still with yourself and take a couple of deep breaths through the nose. That's really important. Close your eyes for a minute. And I want you to think about the last time you really felt at home in your body. Like you belong to it and it belongs to you and you're at peace there. How old were you? I was about seven or eight. Running carefree through the yard. Pulling a kite with my dad. Laughing. Bare feet on the earth. I ran for fun. I ran because it felt delicious to have your bare feet on the grassy earth on a sunny day, with people you love, and a yellow kite against the blue sky. I didn't do it to make myself smaller, faster, better, more lovable. I did it for the joy of it. When's the last time you moved your body just for the joy of it? I want to invite you into a loving relationship, an intimate relationship with your body. I believe math method is one of the most effective tools that has the possibility, the potential to teach us how to do that. But, you know, we can also, we can use tools for all kinds of other purposes too. I don't know about you, but... I use a butter knife for way more than spreading butter at my house. <laughs> it becomes a screwdriver, <laughs> right? So I want to invite you to consider why you want to use math method. What is it you want from your body? And why do you want that from her? And where did you learn to want that? I remember I was in about, I must have been about nine years old. I was in fourth grade when I first had the thought my butt is too big in these jeans. This is what a patriarchal culture does to its female inhabitants. It teaches us that we're not okay, that we're not good enough, that we're not of value, that we have to produce something somewhere. And typically for women, that is someone else's pleasure. That's what we produce. for our partners, eventually for our children. <clears throat> what about for yourself? 
When's the last time you produced something simply for your own pleasure? <laughs> so that's an invitation. That's the first step for me in really getting to the root of what math method, sorry, math, math method can do for your body, for mine, for all bodies. It helped me unravel a lot of the social programming that I had around what I was eating and why, how I was moving my body and why. Yeah, so I had adrenal burnout and I'm gonna, at 8.45 after I put my daughter to bed p.m., I'm gonna do one more 30 minute Zumba video to fit in my jeans. You know, it was the worst thing I could have possibly have done for myself. Wrong intensity, wrong timing. So I learned the hard way. And I'm just here to throw a line out, a lifeline out, um, an invitation out. If you don't want to learn the hard way or if you've already been doing that and you want to try another way, welcome in. Welcome into a little bit of sanity. Welcome into a little bit of real empowerment. I wrote a post today too. Chocolates and bubble baths. <laughs> yeah, we might enjoy those for a minute. But you know, we're sold, women are sold so much shit in the name of self-care that actually is toxic for us. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Sugar's not your friend. The 17 different colors and chemicals in that bubble bath are not your friend. The time you need to be spending with yourself would be better spent um, on something that doesn't also hurt you. And that's what I want to say about the way some people are applying this math method over in the group. Some of us, um, and I, yeah, uh, you're not alone, and I'm not judging. Heck, I did this in the beginning too. I am all about numbers and outcomes and uh, efficiency and um, expediency and outcomes and production, right? You know, we're trained to be that way. And um, I could do it, crunch the numbers, here's my heart rate, here's my time, and I wanna see the stats, and I wanna see the chart, and that chart, we like, to, we like external validation. We're a little bit too hooked on external validation. And the damn graph chart, you know, if it looks shiny and beautiful and it goes up, you know, if my results are better, if I have, it gives me something to brag about or something to show for it, something external to show for it, then I feel good about my, my workouts. And if not, I'm going to use that as a reason to dump on myself, to criticize myself, to feel bad. A lot of you are doing that. I used to do it. A lot of you are doing that. And I want to invite you to just pause. You're not wrong. I'm not here to, to diss you. I'm not even here to say like, you shouldn't be saying math didn't work for you because I've got some tips for you here in a minute. I promise. I just, I really wanted to, to dive down a little deeper into the root of the problem, which is the way we're socialized as women to treat our bodies and what we expect of them. And my journey back from burnout could not have happened if I were not willing to look at it, name it, and piece by piece, leave it behind me. So what other people think, leave it behind me. How fast I am today, I had to leave it behind me. The commercials telling me what to eat, what to buy, leave it behind me. That shit doesn't work for me. You have to be willing to do what works for you at the expense of everything else. Because what's the reverse situation? What's the reverse? You do what works for them at the expense of you and your health and your adrenals and your thyroid and your sleep and your hormone balance, and your hair falling out, and your skin, and your weight, and your mood. How's it going getting along with all your beloveds with your mood like that? Feeling angry all the time, feeling enraged, feeling tired. I have been there. And the only way to walk there, to here, where I am now, 
was these tools in the math method. Phil's a smart guy. He knows. He knows his target audience. He knows he can hook you in if he talks to you about getting faster. I'm not saying it's not true. It's absolutely true. But it's a little it's it's a little bit counterintuitive why it works. We've already talked about the brain. We've talked about the aerobic system. All right. And um, so here's what I want to say to the women who think math, math method doesn't work for you. You might be coming in um, with some layers of social conditioning that kind of have you still entangled, not your fault, with a no pain, no gain paradigm. And that paradigm, this method, math method, eating what works for you, <laughs> um, moving your body in a way that works for you, <laughs> restoring your body the way that works for you, like that method in and of itself is the paradigm shift. That unravels, that unplugs you from everything else that would profit from you being sick and tired and in need of a freaking bubble bath, okay? So here's what I want you to think about. Why did you come to the method? What do you want from it? Do you want to learn a better communication system between you and your body? Because I propose that everything that feels like a problem, like a symptom, like, um, like a pain, all of those things are messages from the body. She's talking to you. And we just have to learn to listen. That's what I did. I spent the last several decades of my life learning to listen in to what my body is saying. So there's that. Um, and then here's the other thing. Are you applying all three parts of math method? Because if not, then yeah, you're really not using it, number one. And number two, it's prob that's probably where we're running into bumps. For example, if you are wanting to apply the heart rate part, the movement part, so we wanna dial in the right intensity to improve your athletic performance, but you're not also resting and you're not also looking at nutrition and your own personal carbohydrate tolerance, excuse me, then actually we could be, um, there's a battle going on there. The reason that we wanna eat, and I'm not gonna say low carb, I'm gonna say within your carbohydrate tolerance. Because yes, you rightfully should be resentful and kind of turned off and totally sketchy of anybody telling you how many carbs you should eat. Absolutely. Who else knows that? They don't know. You know. Your body knows. There's a way to find out. I teach it. Uh, Phil's articles teach it. I use his articles often uh, with my clients one-on-one -on -one when I teach this. If you're not also dialing in your own personal carbohydrate tolerance and you still have a metabolism burning sugar or you're only providing sugar and the intensity then is um, trying to reset a metabolism to burn fat, that's what that intensity is all about, you got a battle going on inside yourself. So yes, it feels bad. So yes, you're going to notice that in your outcome. So yes, you're not going to have the same progress that you would have if you were doing all three parts of the program. Okay, so that's important. The other thing is it happens opposite. Sometimes we have people who will, who will dial in the nutrition stuff just fine and they love to find their carb tolerance and stay low carb for them and they're happy to do all of that, but they didn't really get the heart rate right. So they're working at too high of an intensity. So now we're feeding the body less sugar and more fat so the body can burn fat, but we're not burning fat. We're at the intensity where we're still burning sugar. So now we're craving sugar. So now we don't understand why the low carb is so hard for us. And, and you see what I'm saying? Like these components are meant to go together. And that's what I see so often when we dig a little bit, the women who say, oh, math method didn't work for me. It's typically because um, we didn't really understand how the pieces combine, how important they are to go together, and what the overall effect is of using all three of them is compared to just trying to use one or two, right? So if we just use the rest one, let's say we just use the rest component of math method. So I just rest all the time. <laughs> Doesn't work, right? You can't just use one piece and not the others. Okay. So there's that. That's just straight from my heart, y'all, because um, 
Yeah, I've read a couple of women's stories, pretty touching stories recently about how they're really, really struggling. And if that's one of you, I just want you to know that um, you're not alone. And I've been there. We've all got a different journey to walk, but certainly it is not easy to struggle with health troubles, especially in the, um, you know, the modern medical sick care systems that we have today and how terrifying it can be to not fully understand what's happening with your body. I've heard a couple of women say lately, like they feel like their body is the enemy. And if you feel that way, I'm so sorry, but it doesn't have to be that way forever. The communication can be turned back on and um, with some step-by-step -step tools, you definitely can get back um, to a loving and conscious and intentional relationship with your body where you trust each other. You absolutely can do it because I did. And there's nothing special about me. My dad would disagree, but there's nothing. I just, I learned the tools. I applied them. Trial and error, folks. Trial and error. Trial and error. Trial and error, right? Feedback, feedback, feedback from your body and you have to tweak it. And that's what's missing from the mass group, which is, it's not only predominantly men. And I'm not trying to say the men are doing anything wrong. They're more outspoken. I'm just saying the method as it's written so simply doesn't take these pieces into effect for women. So this is getting long. I want to leave you with a couple of the things that I want you in a woman's body to keep in mind when you're doing math method. If you are not from that group, if you're just uh, one of my followers and people who are looking to learn more about health and fitness, um, this is absolutely for you too. And if you want to learn more about fitness and have support in applying this toward more athletic um, training, um, let me know and I'll get you into that math group as well. Okay. So here's the things that I want you to think about. These are the takeaways for you. In terms of women's bodies, hormone balance, this thyroid stuff that is so common, what I want you to think about is root cause, the foundation here that we have to address. And Math Method can do it, but we've got to tweak these things. The foundation we have to address under there is stress, all right? The stress of your carb load, I want you to consider that. The stress of your blood sugar instability, if you are on a blood sugar roller coaster at all, um, that definitely is causing more physiological stress for you, which will knock all of this off. If you have high levels of stress, the women who say, oh, I tried to do the math method, but I had to slow down so much, it wasn't even worth it. I wanna be a runner and I had to stop running, I had to just walk. What I wanna say about that is that this intensity piece, your heart rate, the way that we use the heart rate to, um, to basically to prescribe the proper intensity for your body to train and work out, we're using that heart rate as a stress meter. And so if you go through periods of time or periods of the day or certain activities where your heart rate is higher, that's your stress meter. So that's why it's really important in the beginning, especially to use the heart rate monitor and to always stay under your math number. Stay under. Often the way to fix the problems that people are having with, with math is to go down a level in intensity, subtract another five. For the folks of you out there who don't know what that is, we don't recommend anymore that you exercise by that old 220 heart rate formula. Like there is so much anaerobic activity built into that high heart rate. We got people overtraining all over the place and burning out with stress. The heart rate formula that I want you to use, and I'm gonna say it simply and then, um, yeah, if you wanna know more, I'm gonna have to point you to some resources to keep this shorter, but it's 180 minus your age. You're gonna subtract another five if you have illness or injury or are on medications. You're gonna subtract another five if you have any, if you have two or more of those things, or if you're not making progress, okay? So for the women who say math didn't work for me, you probably actually were still moving at too high an intensity. And I know that's not what you wanna hear because you had to slow way down and you wanna use math as a way to get faster. And again, welcome back to unraveling some of that no pain, no gain stuff. Why do you need to be faster and why do you need it right now? Would it not be better to tune into your body first, 
let her heal, let her thrive, let her take her time to shift into fat burning and get the adrenals recovered and get the hormone balance going and the proper levels of progesterone. See, if we're all estrogen dominant, we, we got a whole other mess going on there. Okay, and high intensity will perpetuate it. So we have to dial down the intensity. What's wrong with being a walker for a season to let your body heal? And then you can rebuild. So that's what I say about that. So the stress of your carb load. Make sure that you know your carbohydrate um, tolerance. Stay under it. No blood sugar roller coasters. Um, for women, carbohydrate needs are often cyclical. In other words, there's parts of your cycle where you can, you can afford to be and feel good on lower carb. Other parts of your cycle, for some of us, and this depends on your training, um, number one, your training intensity, and number two, like your just overall fitness level. If, if you have been athletic for a long time, then you're probably going to need to cycle your carbs. So carbohydrate tolerance is not the same as stay low carb. That's important to know. That's an important distinction to know, okay? Um, the stress of fasting for a lot of men, f interim fasting works. For women, not so much. For some of us, yes, particularly if we're already fat adapted, I can do well with fasting during certain parts of my cycle. Other parts, no. It just absolutely adds to the cortisol load and dumps me estrogen dominant and has the opposite effect, <clears throat> all right? The messages from your body that tell you what's working and what's not tend to be your waist size, your waist circumference. When you get that middle, that waistline bloating, um, that's a sign that stress, that's a stress meter too, in addition to your heart rate um, and your sleep. If you're having sleep disturbances, then we need to take a look at these other stress pieces. Interim fasting for women can work. It's not a good idea in the beginning. Um, so keep that in mind. The stress of too high an intensity in the workout, this addiction to competition, those stressors um, will really blow our efforts with math. So again, dialing in that proper intensity and even taking it down a notch in the beginning if you need to can have really significant outcomes for the long term. Okay, that's really important, especially because the, and the adrenals are implicated in thyroid. So I want you to think about this for a minute. Those of us with, with thyroid stuff going on, what I want you to think about root cause level is stress load, and I want you to think about digestion, how this impacts your digestion and food issues like food allergies. If you have any food allergies that you're cheating on yourself with about, do not ask why math method did not work for you. Do not ask why your heart rate is jumping all over the place. That's your stress meter. Eating foods that we don't tolerate is a very high stress. That's a big stressor to the body, okay? So, and we can be intolerant, I was, intolerant to foods, um, if our thyroid is low, that we would not otherwise be intolerant to because this has everything to do with your body temperature and digestion and, you know, the whole, um, you know, the chemical stuff with digestion. So if you have thyroid issues, I want you to pay very close attention to your nutritional needs so that you can have um, good digestion and proper nutrition. Those things are all adding to the stress load. I want you to think about this too, in terms of stress, particularly for women, we are naturally cyclical creatures, whether you're still menstruating or not. Um, we have been trained to be out of sync with our natural rhythm and, and cycles of life, which means we tend not to get an adequate rest phase. That's true both seasonally and it's true um, in the shorter term through our menstrual cycles, each one of them. It's true on a diurnal cycle. We're ten, most of us are not getting adequate rest and sleep at night. So you have to think about the stress of being out of rhythm. Um, we know this from work on um, third shift folks, right? That they, they, we cannot get them adequate nutrition. We cannot seem to get their heart rate stabilized. We can't seem to get um, their stress down. The cortisol levels just won't um, even out because they're working night shift. Just that one simple thing of having to sleep when the sun is up and work when it's not is a terrible stressor to the body. Um, so being out of sync with our natural cycles, particularly, again, for women who are very obviously on a daily and monthly basis, cyclical, okay? All right, so there's all of that. We had a nice talk. Who has questions? 
I know a lot of people are going to catch this on replay. So I'm going to come back through and see your questions in the comments, or you can send me, um, here's what I want to say. I want this to be an ongoing conversation, not just a once show up once and get your tips and be done. If you are wanting to have better health and fitness, if you're wanting to improve your athletic performance, um, I absolutely recommend the potential and the power of this math method, which is really just a fancy way of, yeah, I mean, I love Phil and I'm all here. I'm math certified. I mean, I, I love letters and credentials and all the, you know, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, this is all about returning to the body's wisdom, which is ancient. We evolved on this earth under a sun whose light converts to vitamin D3 on our skin. That's one of the most important substances in your body for immunity, for hormone balance, for your brain. So we evolved on this earth, co-evolved with the plants out there that exchange CO2 for O2, that we need to breathe in, that our cells use for energy, that our brain uses to build itself this big, beautiful, sophisticated cortex that we, yeah, that we create, you know, societies and art and science and technology with. Like, you're not like nature. You are nature. And the most important thing you can do for your health, your fitness, your performance, your relationships, everything that happens through your physical body while you live here on this earth, the most important thing you can do is to return to the wisdom of your body because I promise you it knows what it's doing and we just have to listen. We got to be better listeners. Okay. So those niggles that we get, I just want to leave you with this, this in my own little testimonial is this idea that um, math method and what it teaches, the adjustments that we make to the ways that we eat move, rest, and live as a rhythm of life, it's not an overnight kind of change. It's really um, about rebuilding your body. And I want you to think about this for a minute. What science tells us about your cells, you don't have a cell in your body that's older than about seven years old. So we're constantly remaking our bodies, constantly. Think about that for a minute. How are we remaking them? What are we remaking them with? And what kind of energy and intention are we making them with? That's really important too. This whole energy piece, the intentionality piece, really important. We're creative beings and um, we do it with our thoughts, which lead to our actions, right? So <clears throat> I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to think about the power that you have To just change one simple thing at a time. And I want you to think about overall the long-term impact of that. I'll tell you a quick story. You know, I used to have chronic plantar fasciitis, always low back um, pain, right? And what should I do? Well, I should probably get physical therapy for my foot, right? And I should probably um, do a bunch of core work to strengthen my core or to fix my back, right? Well, yes. So there are physical things we need to do for the body. Yes, and there are physical practitioners out there who can help us. I mean, Phil was one for me, right? But what I want to help you understand is that I no longer have any plantar fasciitis ever. And if I ever get, um, get it, it corresponds with low back pain and it corresponds with two days after I eat sugar. And that's not just another like, you know, warning for you to quit sugar. What I'm saying is so much of our health in these bodies is biochemical and it's related to stress. And if we can do one simple thing to lower our stress, it's worth doing. So I just, I'm not trying to say, don't train at a high level. Don't be strong. Don't be fast. Don't go for it. That's not at all what I'm saying. Not at all. But what I'm saying is this, the thoughts that we tend to think about our bodies and how they're not fast enough, not strong enough, not fit enough, not good enough, not as fast as her, can't keep up with them, can't do this anymore. Like those thoughts in and of themselves 
are a form of stress. And they tend to lead us then to actions that cause more stress. So sort of getting our heads, you know, getting a different perspective on the beauty of the body, the balance of the body. And I'm not saying you have to sit around and be a fat Buddha. You can. Phil wouldn't advocate for that either. He wants you to be strong and lean and fit and agile. I mean, isn't that the way we enjoy our bodies the most? When I invited you to think back to that memory about like, when did you feel most at home at your body? What Wasn't it because it, it moved easily? Because it was responsive? Because it was, you know, a, a good vehicle for you to interact, to go somewhere, to do something, to connect with someone. We live all of our lives through these bodies. And all I'm saying is they deserve a chance to be heard for what they need and not to be gaslit into something that we think they should be because of messages from outside us. So I want to leave you with this. I created an entire course built on those three things that we keep talking about today, the, the three foundations or pillars of the math method. I added to them because I love Dr. Phil Maffetone and he helped save my life, but he's never lived in a body with ovaries. So as wise as he is, he's never had that experience. And there's a lot I learned trial and error, <laughs> lots of errors in terms of applying these things and noticing how it impacted my hormone balance and noticing how that impacted everything else. Hello, thyroid. <laughs> so my Vibrant Woman course covers nutrition, movement, sleep and rest and hormone balance being a cyclical creature what that means biochemically what it means in terms of um, lifestyle adaptations how we how basically hormones are the biofeedback tool of a woman's body to say um, how it's doing if your hormones are balanced and you're pain-free all the time and your cycles are pleasant and comfortable and you're okay to move through those different parts of your cycle and see the wisdom. I did a Q&A the other day, what's a woman's zone of genius? Which part of her cycle is a zone of genius? Go watch that. The answer might surprise you. So part four of the Vibrant Woman course is hormone balance and part five is intuition. Intuition, the way it comes through the body, the science behind it, why that is the only guide you will ever need to live vibrantly, to thrive in your own skin and bones. Doesn't mean you don't need a practitioner, but your intuition will help you find the exact right one who has what you need. Your intuition will tell you when something is off and when to walk away and get a second opinion. Your intuition is with you all of the time. And so the Vibrant Woman course includes all five of those components. Plus I've got two um, other experts in embodiment work. Uh, my friend Morgan Doman does a Yoni Egg workshop to help us get in touch with our sensuality, our sexuality, and um, those parts of the body. The yoni is often overlooked. We don't even talk about it in our culture, a woman's pleasure center. So that will be a part of the course, as well as my friend Rev Bridge Feltis, who does um, a really important piece on integrity and how it has the power to help us um, unravel both sort of personal inner oppression, as well as then the cultural oppression that we partake in, sometimes unknowingly. Okay, so there's all of that work for women in my Fiber Woman course. It will begin in January. Registration will open in the middle of January, and I will be back to talk all about that. What I want to do today, though, is just put out this little call. I want to expand the course in the future, and so I'm looking for a small group of women that I can really trust to give me some important honest feedback about some of the things in the course as we go along. Those women are going to get a $300 off discount for joining my feedback team. And they're also going to get a couple of extra one-on-one -on -one sessions with me, both where I want to listen in because I want to, like I said, expand and improve the course going forward. But also um, that's going to be an extra time to have contact with me during the course to get your questions answered as well. So the truth is you're going to get more out of it for less money. 
but I feel like when you bring your heart and I bring mine and together where we overlap, we're going to co-create something really good and important that I can turn around and share, you know, put back out and share with the world again in a more powerful way. That's what we're going to do. I feel like that's the right thing to do. So that's what I'm doing. If you're interested, if you think you might be one of those women that would want to participate with me, will you send me a DM, please, and let me know we can talk more about it. Um, that offer is I'd like to have four people in that group, and I'd like to have them before the end of the year. So if that's interesting to you, will you please let me know? I'm looking for folks who would be a really good fit for that. Again, I don't I don't want to just, this, this work is all about integrity, if you haven't noticed. It's really important to me that we talk honestly about real things that matter to real people and that it be positively impactful to you, that it work for you. And that if it doesn't, that you, again, come back and talk to me. This is an ongoing long-term relationship, the one with your body and then the one that we can have in this community of women um, working with their bodies. It's more of what we need. It's the, the salve for my soul in these times that have been so disconnected and so run by corporates with profits, you know, instead of your health as a priority. I'm over all of that. We need something new. We're going to make it together. I am delighted so many of you are here today. I'm just absolutely delighted to see all of your faces here. I'm going to pause for a minute. What questions do you have? I think I can see if you ask questions. Hold on. Yeah. I'm new to doing these on my phone, so I'm making sure everything's an icon. <laughs> I need to learn more icon language. Okay, what questions do you have? Hmm? I invite you to, again, put them in the comments, send them to me in my DMs, come over to my website, and um, or email me, connect at darcyhawkshurst.com. I want to hear from you. I want to hear from you. I want to know what's working and what's not. I want to know how I can help. And I want to know how we're going to make this new paradigm together. You're important here. And so thank you for being here. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Take a little time to listen to that beloved body of yours. I can hear the dog. She's back here shaking her head. It's time to go. We're going to go walk in the rain and, uh, yeah, smell the mist, the misty air. Even on a cloudy day, you're getting some, some, um, some good sunlight on your skin. So don't underestimate the power of the simple things, the subtle things, and returning your body to its natural rhythms, okay? Thank you for being here. I'm looking for your comments and questions. This is an ongoing conversation. Based on what we what we hear back, maybe we'll do a round two next week and get into some of the nitty gritty that some of you are struggling with making this method work for you. So I can't wait to hear from you. Thank you, everybody. All of my love to you.